You are listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Adam Rosen. I'm a fellowship-trained, board-certified orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knee replacement. Here I'll talk to you about common knee complaints and other orthopedic issues. We'll cover other important health-related topics, all of which are meant to helpfully answer some of your questions and help improve the quality of your life. Thanks for listening, and on with the next episode. Hello and welcome back. This is Adam Rosen and you're listening to Your Knee, Your Health. This is episode 70. Um, And I'm going to kind of go again a little off the the region of the knee, but talk to you about another common complaint that a lot of people do have. And a lot of my patients that I even see for knee problems, you know, will bring up this is another problem. And we're going to talk about elbow tendonitis or what a lot of people know is, you know, golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, um, because they're similar but different because they're located on different areas of the elbow. Um, And before we get into that, you know, we'll just talk about briefly, if you listen to my um, talk about the Achilles, when we talk about the tendon, um, you can talk about what's called tendonitis, which is inflammation of the tendon. And that's usually a short-term episode. You know, you go on vacation, you play a lot of tennis for three days or a lot of golf for three days, you have pain, the pain goes away short-term onset, short-term recovery, no further symptoms, tendonitis. A lot of patients, though, if you play a lot of tennis over many years or golf over many years, will have this constant sort of nagging pain that never really completely goes away, but it can get worse at times. And that's more commonly what we see, what we call tendinosis, is a chronic change of the collagen at the level of the tendon. And again, tendons, ligaments. So Tendons are the structure that connects muscles to bone. Ligaments are what connect bone to bone. So we're talking about a tendon here. So if we talk about lateral epicondylitis, if you rest your elbow in your lap with your palm facing up um, and you use your right arm, take your left hand and use your index finger and your thumb to kind of pinch the elbows, if you can, on the inside and outside, and you'll feel two bumps Those are what's called the epicondyles. So on the outside, or what we call the lateral epicondyle, your extensor tendons insert to that area. So these are tendons that allow you to extend your wrist and fingers. And the most common one that's involved is your ECRB, your extensor carpi radialis brevis. That part's not important for you to know. Um, And it, it does not always happen to just people playing tennis. You can see this in painters, plumbers, carpenters, butchers. I mean, even if you take on a project at home and do, you know, two weekends worth of painting in your house, um, you can get pain in this area. It commonly happens to people between their 30s and 50s. And the symptoms can be varied, but, you know, fairly straightforward stuff. You know, pain, it hurts. A lot of times with pain, you might sense burning in that area. You might have weakness when you go to grip things or pick things up. Um, And some people even get pain at night. Now, that's where your index finger is on the outside. So where your thumb is on the inside is what's called the medial epicondyle. And this is typically referred to as golfer's elbow. But again, anybody that uses any instrument that they grip um, can get these symptoms. Um, And a lot of the symptoms are very similar. It's just the location is slightly different. Now, the good news is that 80 to 90% of the time, you can get better with non-surgical treatment, and there's a lot of options. But, you know, well, how do you know if if that's what it is? Because there are some other things in that area um, that can cause similar symptoms, um, but they're not truly lateral or medial epicondylitis. Um, So for for tennis elbow, you know, one of the easiest um, examination things that you can do, obviously, besides palpating it, because you can feel it and go, hey, it, doc, it hurts right here, um, is if you hold your arm out straight, so your elbow straight, let your wrist kind of drop down, and then take your other hand, put your fingers behind the back of your hand, and then try to extend your wrist up so you straighten out your wrist. That will elicit pain. I mean, in the office, you know, I tell people to do it gently, and it's like a millisecond, they go to just move their wrist up you try to block it, it hurts, they stop. You know, it's another classic finding. And the reverse is true for golfer's elbow. You know, if you have palm up, elbow straight, and then the hand lays down, 
put your hand on the palm and try to bring it up. You know, that, and even just testing grip strength. If you test the grip and try to squeeze, a lot of times it'll cause pain, or we have um, devices in the office that you can use to test grip strength, and you might see a significant difference in the pounds of grip strength in the affected arm versus the non-affected arm. Um, so definitely things it's, you know, if you're plagued by these symptoms, definitely worth, you know, seeing your doctor and getting it checked out. But the good news is that, you know, a lot of the treatments are pretty simple and straightforward. The first one, which is actually usually the hardest for people that enjoy tennis and golf or people that work, let's say they're, you know, a carpenter by profession is rest. You got to stop doing the thing that's causing the problem. You know, if you got a headache from banging your head against the wall, you got to stop banging your head against the wall. Otherwise, you're going to keep having a headache. Um, Now, in addition to rest, you can use pills over the counter, things like anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs. You know, if you're unsure of these, go back and listen to my other episode on NSAIDs. Um, There's even some topical anti-inflammatories. Maybe your stomach gets upset with the pills. You can use the topical forms like diclofenac, which is the generic of the brand name Voltaren, and you can use that topically right over the area that it hurts. Um, Physical therapy or a home exercise program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some links in the show notes um, of a great series of just simple exercises. Um, and I'm going to do a, an episode on this, um, just on this whole website. So our, our academy, the AAOS, has a whole section for patients um, that gives you a whole series of home exercise programs. You know, and you may have seen the one on the neck, um, but for back pain, shoulder pain, knee pain, I mean, you name it, they're in there. So you can do a little, you know, Google search for your problem and find a bunch of home exercises, you know, if you know what the problem is. But the two basic, you know, stretching exercises are just basically what we just did, but instead of trying to flex or extend your wrist, you're just trying to stretch it more. So keeping your elbow out, again, if it's your right arm, right arm out in front of you, elbow straight, palm facing up, let your palm hang or let your hand hang down, take your other hand, grab your fingers, and just try to pull your fingers back. That'll stretch the front of your forearm tends to stretch more of those flexors, um, where if you do the reverse and palm facing down, let your hand hang down, elbow straight, take your hand, put it behind your hand, pull back, that's going to stretch the extensors. But even if you just have one problem, tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, it's good to stretch both sides in both arms. So you've done the rest, you've done the anti-inflammatories, you've done the stretching. Using ice a lot of times helps. Some people I find before the stretching can use heat to loosen things up, followed by stretching, followed by icing. That tends to be really helpful. Um, There are a number of braces, and the idea behind the brace, again, is a reminder, you know, not to put your arm into compromising positions. Um, It may change the insertion point a little bit, just acts as a little bit of pressure. So there's things that may help you. Um, Two, injections um, that you can do. So cortisone injections have been shown to offer some good temporary relief. So this is one of those things that if, you know, stretching, ice, anti-inflammatories don't help, your doctor may offer you the option of a cortisone injection. Um, PRP or platelet-rich plasma, which again has not been shown to be really effective for arthritis. Um, It has had studies, again, some that don't show a benefit, some that do, um, but again, very low risk. So it's something your doctor may talk to about or offer if the other options have failed of injecting this platelet-rich plasma into that area to induce some type of response. The other important thing too is... um, after the stretching, after the reduction of inflammation, before returning to sport, is strengthening. And the two basic things are wrist curls and wrist extensions. You can do this with a soup pan. You can do it with a one-pound dumbbell, two-pound dumbbell, even an exercise band. And you can rest your wrists on your legs if you're sitting in a chair, palms up, wrists hang down, curl your wrists up, slowly let your wrists come down. That would be the wrist curl. That works your flexors, more for the problem that you'd have with golfers. And then if you turn your hands over, so palms facing down, let your hands hang, wrists up and then down, that works your extensors. But again, if you start strengthening before you've reduced the pain and problems, it's just going to re-exacerbate these issues. The other thing before you return to sport is really looking um, at changing or modifying your grip. So even if you're a carpenter, you know, you might wrap some padding that you could buy from a tennis store um, or a bike store um, or just any kind of other, you know, compression tape that makes that bigger. Just like 
the the tennis racket you can take to the pro shop or you know the the golf club you can take to the pro shop and have the grips adjusted and sometimes having a slightly bigger grip um, will change that way that you're gripping the club and may decrease a lot of these symptoms in the future. Now, what about surgery? So surgery is an option. Usually it's recommended that you fail 6 to 12 months of this non-op treatment because, again, the majority of people will get better. So it's not a, I've had pain for you know a month, I want to have surgery to get better right away, is if you rest and give this time, a lot of these symptoms will go away. But there are some people that after all of those things that we talked about still continue to have pain and problems that your doctor may talk to you about some type of surgical intervention and there's a few different options. So it would be best for them to talk to you based on your symptoms and go over what the options are and what the recovery is like. So I hope that this helps answer um, some of your questions that you have on golfer's elbow medial epicondylitis, or tennis elbow, lateral epicondylitis. And again, I'm going to put links in the show notes um, that you can click on to find a series of home exercise programs that you can do for the stretching and strengthening um, to start your recovery and, and definitely speak to your healthcare provider to get a better exam to make sure that there's nothing else going on um, aside from these two um, common diagnoses um, from playing these racket sports and club sports. In the meantime, um, stay safe. If you like what you're hearing, please subscribe, leave a review, let your friends know if you think they would benefit from this information. You've been listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast, and I'm your host, Adam Rosen. Thanks for listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. If you've not already done so, please subscribe so you'll be notified of future episodes. And if you enjoy what you're hearing, please take the time to leave a review. It helps other people like you find the show. I'm your host, Adam Rosen, and until next time, stay safe.